So as I think about how we go through significant changes in our lives, uh, research from the 50s and 60s said that we go through a significant life change about every five years. And that has to do with kids leaving school, going into university, moving away from home, um, serious illnesses, loss of a parent, good things as well, a marriage, new house. I have a hunch, though, that the every five years has speeded up and that for, for many of us now, it's about every three to five years. And so we add the personal layer of, of change on top of the economic changes that we're experiencing. There is a lot that we have to make adjustment for. And in our lifetime, we're going to see ourselves and our friends change careers or change direction three or four times. It's in, the, it's in that transition between what we were doing and what we don't know what we're going to do next that we make course corrections. And you know, when life hums along at rocket speed, we don't make the course corrections. So this is going to be personal course correction, but also some significant, um, significant career shift as well. And it's going to be essential to be looking at jobs that are posted, to be thinking about what are the credentials that are needed that I don't have yet, and keep a file that is, a, and I used to do this, a file that said jobs I'd love to have, but I'm not qualified for yet. And as you're looking at positions that are posted and you're seeing that you qualify in this area, but there are these pieces, how then can you go after those pieces? So how do we predict what's going on? I don't know that any one source has all the information. But the way for you to be paying attention is with people that you know in the industry you're in to continue to have the conversations that, wherever you can about what are you seeing, what's happening, what does your company, what's your company paying attention to? How is competition impacting the business that you're in or that your company is part of? How many of you have been in technology? Good portion. That's very interesting. Companies are, can afford to wait until they find somebody with the exact skill set. And that's different from a few years ago, where it might be that you had a match of six or seven out of ten, and they're ready to give you the training. So I think that's very challenging. Another interesting trend, and I don't know if I can even call it a trend, is I am surprised at the number of companies that are small that add one person or add two people. And when I hear people are landing a new job and it's, with, it's not with the big firms, it's with the small companies, and I'm thinking, I hadn't even thought about those companies. And oftentimes, it comes through a referral from somebody else. Or recently, two of those positions were on Craigslist. I'll give you an example from a recruiter. She said she just tested it out. She ran an ad for the company that was real. And in the first week, they got 100 applications. In the second week, they got 1,000. And so they pulled the ad off of the website. And this was just on the company website. It was not on Indeed or Monster. So companies you're interested in, take a look at the company website. So keep a running tab of companies that you're interested in and look at them frequently because sometimes they take those ads off when they've got enough applications. And then I recommend if you see a job posted on Monster or Indeed or uh, Idealist or Craigslist, note it and go to the company website and submit your application through the company website. I just think that's just, that's, that's just a little extra piece that you've been paying attention. It may, it may show up that you're, that you're more interested. Um, I mentioned Puget Sound Business Journal. I use that quite often. If, if, for instance, you've seen a job at a company, you're interested in it, and um, you want to target your cover letter, do a search on Puget Sound Business Journal in the archives for the last year to see if there have been any articles about that company. And then really read the website. Don't submit an application for a day 
until you've thoroughly researched that company and read the web website because you'll do a better job with your cover letter and you'll do a better job with your application, with your, with your resume. Best practices and resumes, um, at the top, you don't really need an objective because so often people will put something way too general. Looking for a satisfying job with a growing company where I can, where I can prove my skills. It's not an effective summary. An effective summary would be skilled analyst with 15 years experience in this business. Responsibilities include that kind of thing. So look for ways to make, um, what did I hear, to use, to, use, um, to use action words. And someone said ninja verbs. And I said, what's that? And they said, kick in the butt verbs, you know? Things that are action, that, that what you did and, how, and what project you were involved in and what the outcome was and what the results were. Very important. Even in tough times, businesses need employees. need employees, need employees, need to make money, need support services. Thank you. What else? They need to advertise or need customers, right? Thank you. Need to reduce costs, yes. Need analysts. And I think we're going to see as a result of that, I think that we're also going to see it impact uh, salaries, and salaries are going to be more compressed. What else, even in tough times businesses? To promote their product. Yeah. Need to adapt. Oh, terrific. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. So, so.